We are on our way to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Met, and uh, we had just walked across Central Park from the American Museum of Natural History, but we actually just took what the cars take. We didn't actually go through the park, but uh, we see a lot more beautiful buildings with us here, possibly people's mansions from way back when. We're headed back to uh, Fifth Avenue, taking north, but there's a whole lot of people for Sunday afternoon. So here is the Met or the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City and it is the largest art museum in the Western Hemisphere with a permanent collection of over 2 million artworks wow. and it's so massive there is no way I could even do an hour in it. This is my second visit ever and this time only myself and Tristan proceeded to the museum as we cut across Central Park really quickly. The hours of operation is only up till 5 p.m. again and uh, this is the famous steps leading up to it where Gossip Girl is filmed, right? And uh, there's also the Met Ball uh, once a year, it just happened a few weeks ago where a lot of celebrities lined up. They usually have a theme. I think this year's theme was something with New York City. Um, and they go in and they have fundraisers inside. But this museum is so huge. They have the biggest collection of Egyptian artworks. Uh, Mesopotamia. From uh, It's interesting because I feel like a lot of these pieces would have been in the ROM too. And an art gallery back here in Toronto would just be pure art, like paintings and installations and, and, and some sculptures, but most of the sculptures will still be like in what the natural museum would be. And in this case, all the artworks from different civilizations are also seen here. And it's so huge that they even have like tunnel spaces that they oh. extracted from old buildings and they put in. They would have oh. humongous gates of previous cathedrals and they would have it in the Met, if you can believe that. And they even have a small tiny pyramid that they extracted from somewhere in, in Egypt oh, wow. and planted it in the Met. So they have these huge spaces and I feel like you go into one huge cavernous room and you get lost in it and then you try to find your way out and you can't <laughs> and you just keep continuing and you're like oh my goodness i am still in like i don't know um you know 14th century dutch art yeah. like i don't know but of course a lot of the artworks before were very much religious based right a lot of it was um for for cathedrals for churches um pictures of saints pictures of the crucifix or, or sculptures of the Holy Family. So a lot of it was very much religion based as we can see with the Madonna carrying the child or stained glass windows. Um, I think it's looping behind me where they have actually like a big gate or it's, it's from a, a cathedral. It's yeah. pretty amazing to see. They showed it. But you have these huge uh, relics like this, right? Mm -hmm. Which they extracted probably from like old um, breaking churches or, or even graveyards. And they bring it here and they're made so out of marble. So what year would those be? Like 11th century France. Yeah. So really, really old stuff, right? But again, it's amazing how these collections are put together so that we can appreciate it for those who like these kinds of things. And then we move on and I love these kinds of like pre-Raphaelite works. So this is one of my favorite artworks. This is now British artwork. And it's so interesting how it's even so specific for just British artwork. And as you can see, there's a lot of porcelain, a lot of china because they love tea. Mm. Right, so there's a lot of kettle work actually, um, but they also did a lot of work with China with ceramics. Um, moving on here, I believe we're out of the British artwork. I could be wrong, but even like the all the ceiling. all the ceilings are so ornate, so sumptuous, so decorated highly, and this is just the room that houses these things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, we also have old furniture. A lot of them are, of course, from pioneer times, old New York. They would have all of these uh, family portraits of the wealthy New York from before. And the clothes. And the dresses that they would wear. And they're still in beautiful condition, like really well preserved after centuries of being there. Yes. A lot of printmaking. There was this artist teapots. there. Teapots. And these are a collection of teapots. But again, look how highly detailed they, they each are. And they, they still are alive. And some of These them, ones are colorful. The other ones are white. Yep, yep. So again, there's china pieces versus glazed. Versus, and so there's actually a place in France that's still up today where they were very much, their specialty was making sure that the the colors doesn't oh, melt in. So ornate, right? So the, these are triptychs, meaning they're like three-way panel doors. Okay. And you paint on them. Tristan had to do a triptych for grade 11, I believe. Oh, these are the That's gates. the gate that I'm telling you about. Isn't that 
insane. So they took that from a church. They took it from a church and it's installed there. And among all the other works. And some of them look familiar. Like I feel like I've seen this in a textbook, you know? And this is actually the, the child um, French emperor when he was five years old and he was a, a painting of him. This is now French works mm -hmm. from the 11th century onward up until the revolution. And then you walk out and this is Perseus Romans? with the head of Med uh, Medusa. Is this the Romans it's, or no? It's uh, Romans, yes. Roman Greek. Yeah. So again, there's always a difference between Greek sculpture versus Roman sculpture. Greek sculpture had a fine form of balance. You can actually see a lot of them just balancing on one foot oh, okay, okay. and it's perfectly placed versus Romans they couldn't figure that out so they would have like a tree bark beside it oh just to help that sculptures balance stay in place yeah so that's how you would know the difference between Greek and Roman architecture or uh, sculpturing I was just fascinated by this gate because really, <laughs> yeah, because they all I'm like I was asking where's the exit and they're like you have to go through the gate I'm like where and then of course above the the doorways it would say exit but when you exit you actually exit elsewhere oh. <laughs> and then you're like lost continuously at this point i think me and tristan were just like running out of energy and then we go out into this another open space and we walk into master works of dutch painters which you know there is the famous one the girl with the pearl earring what's uh, this just this plants? is a yeah this is just like a garden area so that fountain in the middle was from a palazzo by the medici family who was a big noble family from italy in the i don't know ninth century okay. i'm making things up now but that was extracted from it because whoever whoever owed them money couldn't pay them in money so had to build them a fountain mm. and so around this area oh, around this nice. courtyard were all dutch works <clears throat> So the Dutch painters from the 14th century, they were very much into detail and still life. So it's interesting because they'll put like, you know, um, flowers beside a vase, beside a piece of meat, and they'll put that work together. This is oil? Oil, yes. Usually oil and canvas. And uh, pictures by Rembrandt, who was one of the best naturalist uh, painters of all time. So this is a Rembrandt. Yes, that's a Rembrandt. But he would, he would use like regular people and then he would dress them. So he was one of the first people to do that versus a long time ago. Like when you paint a Pope, that, that guy was actually the Pope. But mm -hmm. Rembrandt would like actually get like just a model oh, and like okay. just clothe, the, just dress them. And then yeah. so people kind of made fun of his technique. If you can see this Dutch painting, it actually looks very lively, right? It does. And so they were made fun of that they're, they're showing too much um, happiness in their art. And then the French people are like, but art needs to be more serious. Yes. So art took a more, a more serious tone again. Um, again, so many different rooms, so many different paintings, uh, so many different styles. And where are we now? Again, more uh, of Rembrandt style. People. More people, but again, very natural looking people, right? So the art They look like photographs. They look like photographs, but people went from very flat two-dimensional looking people uh, to now you can actually have shadows, you can have perspective, you can yeah. have details and characters seen through them. And uh, he was also very famous for doing a lot of self-portraits of himself. Okay. Um, this was another room where it had just a lot of 17th century, 18th century European art. I think Tristan enjoys a lot of European art the most. Which is interesting because a lot of his work is very modern. Yeah. And yet, whenever we went to the modern museum, he didn't like any of them. But I'm like, that's how yours <laughs> look like, right? But he's really fascinated with these kinds of art. Like, it's almost like he couldn't get enough reading from it. And I'm yeah. like, oh my goodness, we're never going to leave the Met. We're never going to go to the next museum. But look how beautiful even the Circles. spaces are, right? Just... And we didn't even go over to the right, over to the right through that hallway is their more. big Egyptian collection. Okay. We just didn't have space for it. And at this point we were hobbling. Mm -hmm.